Hello everyone. Welcome to Logic Medico. Today's interesting topic is Submandibular Salivary Gland. As the name suggests, it is located in the submandibular region or you can call it as digastric triangle because it is bounded by two muscles the anterior and the posterior belly of digastric. This is the submandibular salivary gland. Here the one half of the mandible is cut so that the gland is visible to you. So the submandibular salivary gland, the shape of it is almost like a walnut. It is approximately 10 to 20 grams in weight. It is a type of mixed salivary gland meaning 50 to 55 percent of it is made up of serous acini and the remaining is made up of mucus acini. 5 to 10 percent of it will be demilions, that is a serous demilions. As I already stated, it is lying in this triangle called as digastric triangle. It is partly related to the inner surface of the mandible, just below the mylohyoid line, there is a depression. And because of this gland, it is called submandibular fossa. Coming to the parts of the submandibular cerebral gland, it has got a larger portion. 90% of the gland is in this area, it is called the subocial part. Across the posterior border of this muscle, this muscle is mylohyoid. To wind across it and go inside. The remaining 10% of the gland is here. That is a deep part. So it is divided into two parts the larger superficial part and the smaller deep part by the mylohyoid muscle. From the deep part arises the duct, the submandibular salivary duct, the Wharton's duct. So if I remove the deep part, it is as good as removing the whole gland because all the duct system of the superficial part will pass through this deep part to reach the submandibular duct. So the same thing you can see in a much clearer view. So the coming to the presenting parts, it has the superficial part, this portion, it's got an anterior end and a posterior end. It has got a surface facing downwards. That is the skin area, which is called inferior surface, and the lateral surface will face the mandible, the inner surface of the body of the mandible, and the medial surface will face the mylohyoid muscle. This anterior end is related to the anterior belly of digastric, whereas posterior end is related to the posterior belly of digastric along with stylomandibular ligament. Also, it bears a groove for the looping of the facial artery before the facial artery enters the face by, by passing through the anterior inferior border of mesenter it will rest on the submandibular salivary gland in fact the facial artery is between the submandibular fossa of the mandible and the salivary gland it gives glandular branches to the submandibular salivary gland so actually the saliva is an ultra filtrate of plasma and that plasma is coming from this glandular branches of facial artery mainly. Come to the coverings of the submandibular cerebral gland. The investing layer of deep cervical fascia splits to enclose the submandibular cerebral gland in such a way it encloses the inferior surface and the lateral aspect of the submandibular cerebral gland. Whereas the deep lamina is attached to the mylohyoid line of the mandible. The superficial lamina will be attached to the inferior border of the mandible. So it covers inferior surface and the medial surface of the mandible of the gland. Coming to the surfaces, each surface and its relation. The inferior surface, as the name suggests, is facing downwards and is covered by the skin, superficial fascia, investing layer of deep cervical fascia, along with the subcutaneous muscle called as platysma. It is crossed by common facial vein and also the cervical branch of facial nerve which goes to supply the subcutaneous muscle of the neck which is the platysma. So that is the relation of inferior surface. Whereas the lateral surface as already stated, it is related to this bone which is cut off here. That is the body of the mandible, specifically speaking the submandibular fossa. Also the inner surface of the ramus of the mandible is receiving attachment of medial pterygoid muscle. As already stated, the facial artery is sandwiched between 
submandibular fossa of mandible and the gland itself. Medial surface is much extensive than the lateral surface. This medial surface can be explained under the following heading anterior portion, intermediate, and the posterior portion. So, anterior portion, as you can see that clearly it is resting on this muscle called as mylohyoid muscle. So, therefore, it is also related to the nerve and vessel going to the mylohyoid. It is called the mylohyoid nerve or nerve to mylohyoid and mylohyoid vessels. That is the relation of the anterior part. Posterior part we can see here from the styloid process to the tongue. This is a tongue styloglossus. Going downwards to the pharynx will be stylopharyngeus along with one nerve called as glossopharyngeal nerve. The most important part is the intermediate part. So, this intermediate part is related to the following muscles the posterior belly of digastric, you can see this one, posterior belly of digastric, the middle constrictor of the pharynx, which is a deep muscle of the neck, it's a muscle of the pharynx actually, and one nerve called as hypoglossal nerve. So, that nerve is related to the intermediate portion and the first part of lingual artery also in addition to the mylohyoid this intermediate portion is related to the hyoglossus one of the muscle going to the tongue along with can you see this, this is the lingual nerve and this ganglia this is called submandibular ganglia just if you reflect this you will be able to see the hypoglossal nerve so I'll repeat from above onwards Hyoglossus resting on that will be lingual nerve, submandibular ganglia, and below that will be the hypoglossal nerve. So this is from above downwards the relation on the medial surface. The deep part, as I already stated, is encircling the posterior border of the mylohyoid to reach the floor of the oral cavity. This is the deep part. So, the deep part is sandwiched between the mylohyoid on the outer aspect and the tongue muscle that is a hyoglossus not shown in this picture. It will come from the hyoid and goes towards the lateral margin of the tongue. It is called hyoglossus. So, it is sandwiched between mylohyoid laterally and hyoglossus medially. Come to the duct. As I already stated, the duct begins from the deep part. You can see this duct. It goes forward and it opens into one projection on the lower surface of the tongue. It is called as sublingual papillae. And this duct is called as Wharton's duct. Its length is approximately 5 cm, diameter is approximately 2 to 4 mm. It opens into the floor of the oral cavity through a puncta called as sublingual papillae because it is present in the underneath the tongue. It is like a finger like projection. Underneath the tongue, therefore called sublingual, finger like projection, therefore called papillae. The puncta is constricted portion of the duct which prevents the backward flow or the retrograde flow of the whatever could be eat which should not enter the duct or the gland right so the puncta prevents that and also prevents the entry of bacteria into the gland so where does it uh, open submandibular duct or the watkins duct of course to the floor of the oral cavity or the mouth in a papillae called sublingual papillae which is there on either side of frenulum lingual when you lift your tongue upwards like this you can see this is the frenulum lingual and this is a peacock feather like fold, fimbriated fold. But in the two folds, you can see one elevation here. It's called a sublingual papilla. So, what is the blood supply? As already stated, the facial artery gives glandular branches. In addition to this, the artery to the tongue, lingual artery also gives glandular branches to the submandibular salivary gland. The venous return will be to the similar vein, spatial vein, and the lingual vein. The lymphatic drainage is to the similar group of lymph nodes, that is submandibular lymph nodes. Ultimately, it ends up in the lymph nodes in the upper deep cervical group of lymph nodes between the digastric muscle and the IJV. Therefore, it is called jugulodigastric lymph nodes. So, that is a summary of the submandibular duct. Last but not the least, nerve supply parasympathetic and sympathetic. So, stimulation of the parasympathetic nerve causes watery secretion from the submandibular saliva gland. Whereas, stimulation of sympathetic nervous system causes sticky or mucoid secretion, jelly like secretion. The gist of nerve supply, that is, the parasympathetic control is more stimulated to the gland. So,
So it begins from the superior salivator nucleus, which is present at the level of the pons. It belongs to patient now nucleus, group of nucleus. So it takes the help of patient now to reach the infratemporal fossa, where the patient now wants to go to the face, whereas the submandibular gland is below the mandible. So it gives off one branch called as corda tympani branch. This corda tympani branch of the patient now joins the posterior aspect of lingual nerve because lingual nerves is anyway coming forward towards the tongue so this gland is anyways below the tongue and below the mandible both. so this lingual now relays in the submandibular ganglia the post ganglionic fibers from the submandibular ganglia will immediately supply the submandibular salivary gland and takes the help of lingual now again to reach the sublingual salivary gland superior salivary nucleus supplies not only Submandibular salivary gland, but also sublingual salivary gland. The ganglion for the relay of the information is submandibular ganglia. Thank you for watching and learning from Logic Medico. And kindly subscribe to our channel and share this video with your other friends. Happy learning. The clinical importance of submandibular gland includes formation of the calculi or the stone within the submandibular gland because it is a mixed type of salivary gland more mucoid secretion is there so also the duct is what anti-gravity drainage it is it's going from below upwards so these are the points in favor of submandibular salivary gland thank you for watching and learning from logic medical